안녕하십니까? Greetings. I'm Dr. s o n y o n g h e of Kung Fu E Dental Clinic. Today I'm going to talk about how to solve atrophy the ridge with horizontal resorption and how to solve it using asset kit. I'm going to talk about ridge split. If long time has elapsed since extraction, you can see horizontal resorption, especially in the buccal area. If this worsens, so you come across knife edge ridge. There are many difficulties in placing implant in such thin ridge and there can be many difficulties in securing long-term stability of implant. The alveolar ridge changes after extraction. Resorption occurs. After 12 months, the height reduces by 1.2 millimeter, and in terms of width, three months later, it reduces by 30%, and it continues to become resorbed throughout life. Two times more resorption occurs in buccal side compared with lingual side. Let's look at the category of available bone presented by Mission Judy. With time, there's horizontal bone resorption followed by vertical bone resorption. And in the end, basal bone is the only thing that remains. This is how the ridge is resorbed. This is a physiological process that occurs. In order to overcome horizontal alveolar ridge, Resorption, there are many methods available. There's block bone graft, guided bone regeneration. This is not used commonly, but you can also use distraction osteogenesis to increase the amount of bone. <clears throat> Ridge split or expansion technique can be utilized to increase the horizontal bone amount. How much is sufficient bone for implant placement? In the case of upper posterior, there needs to be at least a 1 mm thickness of buccal and lingual plate. In 2000, Spray said that the appropriate bone amount is 1.8 to 2 mm. For ridge expansion, you need at least a 1 to 1.5 mm of buccal or lingual plate. Therefore, there needs to be at least a 1.5 to 2 mm of buccal or lingual bone to prevent buccal bone resorption. That is the common understanding. There are ways to regenerate buccal bone. Buccal bone is more problematic in most cases. So you can do block bone graft. The downside is that additional surgery is necessary and for revascularization, long healing period is necessary and it's quite technically sensitive. In the case of GBR, you can get relatively favorable outcome, and this is frequently used. However, additional incision or releasing may be necessary. The downside is that once the membrane is exposed, the regeneration effect is dampered. It takes a long period of time for the graft material to mature as well. In certain cases, we can do ridge split osteotomy. In the case of ridge split osteotomy, it was first introduced by Simeon in 1992. The remaining buccal lingual width needs to be over 3 mm. Let's look at the indication. The when there is a severe horizontal loss, but not that severe vertical bone loss. Also, there needs to be wide alveolar ridge base. You should not use it if the base is narrow. This is also a very important indication, but then needs to be sufficient amount of bone marrow. If there's too much cortical bone, it's not fit. 
The benefit is that without additional graft, the alveolar ridge width can be increased, the implants can be placed, time can be saved, implant housing effect can be had. The implant is surrounded by bone, therefore there is more blood supply leading to accelerated regeneration. The disadvantage is that it's technically sensitive if you do osteotomy wrongly, there can be fracture and it requires vertical osteotomy and if done wrong, it can lead to cortical plate fracture and devitalization. And because the surgical site widens, additional incisions are made on the bone, so the patient feels a lot of discomfort. This cannot be done in single missing cases, but it can be very difficult. It can be very difficult. Depending on the shape of residual alveolar ridge, you can look at the indications. The ridge crest can be very thin, but it can have a medium or wide range of apical base. So you can do ridge expansion or a split. This is the indication for that as shown on the right. If there's a thin crest with thin apical base, you should do GBR or block bone graft instead of doing ridge split to get more bone. If it falls under the right indication, you can use the technique. For ridge split, it is important to make a favorable condition. You can use the ridge as is, but you can make the indication right. If the patient has broad ridge base and has sufficient bone marrow space and has the proper cortical bone, the ridge width needs to be at least a three millimeter. This is the most favorable condition. The above three factors are patient dependent factor. We cannot make it for the patient, but three millimeter of ridge width, we can make it for the patient. If it is too thin, you can do alveolar plasty to make the three millimeter ridge width. However, this is under the precondition that the vertical available bone is sufficient. If you use as a kit to do ridge split, alveolar plasty can be very useful to get the necessary width. In the past, this kind of technique was used for ridge split. You use high-speed burr and other tools to do osteotomy. You do melting or use chisel to widen it. This was how ridge split was done. The problem is that vertical osteotomy was imperative. You need to do vertical releasing incision to be able to do vertical osteotomy. The downside is that surgical field expands and with this, the patient discomfort increases. Using ridge splitting osteotome is used to widen it. This was used frequently, but it is associated with many problems. If the split is not done properly or if it is the wrong indication, and these kind of problems can occur. In this case, the cortical bone was too thick. It did not split but fracture. Second, this, on the other hand, is a completely different situation. I did split in the upper, the cortical bone was too thin and tearing can occur. It did not split, but tearing occurred. In order to minimize various complications in doing ridge split, tools have been developed and a kit called asset kit was developed. This kit is to be able to do ridge split in an easier way. Let's look at asset kit. 
A set kit. A set kit is as shown. This is a newer version. I have an older version. Only the newer version is being sold. This is the new version. There are not that many to explain about the components. There's crest remover for alveolar plasty. Next, saw for osteotomy. Next, set drill for osteotomy. These three components are used. First, alveolar plasty is done using crest remover, and a saw is used for creating osteotomy, and the set the drill to split the ridge. The asset kit comprises of these tools to do ridge split. If you look at the purpose, in the case of crest remover, in the position where implant is going to be placed, the crest remover removes the thin ridge in order to widen the width buccolingually. You can use it with contra angle or straight angle. Second, in the case of saw, the actual diameter of saw are 7, 10, and 13 millimeter. They have different purposes. If you place longer implant, you use longer saw. When you use shorter implant, you use smaller diameter saw. In most cases, you move forward without vertical osteotomy. In the case of distal free end case, you only form horizontal osteotomy. Next is set drill. After osteotomy, this splits the ridge. There's number one, two, three, and four set drill. You can place a 4 millimeter or a 4.5 millimeter implant. The implants, you can place four and 4.5 millimeter implant using asset kit. You use these four set drills. The order of using set drill, in the case of distal free end, you start off with the one in the middle, distal and mesial one. You use engine at first, in the case of lower, when you do ridge split, when it requires more torque, you connect hand wrench and do ridge split slowly. You can use it for different steps. When you place a 4.0 diameter implant, you use up to number 3. As for 4.5 millimeter implant, you use up to number 4. There are three components here. It's not complicated. You just use it in the order. When you use asset kit for ridge split, the protocol is to do the following. This is used most frequently when number 5, 6, 7 are missing. This is used when it is distal free end case. If it is number 5, 6, 7 missing, the way to do crest removing is as shown. Alveoloplasty is done in area where implant is going to be placed in order to secure approximately 4 mm of width. If the ridge width is less than 4 mm, you do this process to the entire surgical site. This is when bone height is lacking and then you move on to do additional crest removing on the implant placement sites. As mentioned, you do alveoloplasty in one straight line and you do additional steps on implant placement sites. If the ridge height is sufficient, you do harvesting first and then ridge is prepared. However, this is not frequently used. Alveoloplasty can be done in these two ways. Simply put, before you do ridge splitting, the purpose is to secure 4 mm of buccolingual ridge width. If the height is sufficient, you can use the saw to do bone harvesting first, and then additional alveoloplasty can be done 
to get wider buccal lingual width. However, there can be interference with patient's tongue and buccal flap. Therefore, it's not recommended. The recommendation is to do the first option, where 4 mm of ridge width is secured in the implant placement sites. That'll be more favorable. If there is more than 4 mm of buccal lingual width in implant placement site, you either use lance drill or 1.8 mm twisted drill to do initial drilling. Number one and number two can switch. You can do osteotomy first and then move on to initial drilling. This would not be a problem, but on the protocol, you need to do initial drilling on implant placement site. And horizontal osteotomy is formed by connecting these holes. In the case of three teeth missing cases, osteotomy is started off in the center area and then move, you move on to distal area. In the proximal area where it's closer to adjacent to teeth, you use the smallest saw, which is 7 millimeter, and you do it most shallowly to form osteotomy. In the case of full depth osteotomy, you start off from the center and move on to distal area. You never use it in the proximal area, which is close to adjacent teeth. It is unfavorable to use large size saw. Next set drills are used in the defined order. You always start off in the middle and then distal area and then proximal area. This is how we do ridge split. In using set to drill, you do not use drills number 1, 2, 3, and 4 in one site all at once and then move on to the next implant placement site, but you use number 1 set drill in all the implant placement sites first and then move on to number 2, 3, and 4 drills. Moving from center, distal, to proximal areas. When you place two implants, you start off from the distal area and move on to mesial area. The final split point is where you are closer with the adjacent teeth. You use set drill in order. In the case of upper, everything can be addressed with engine. However, in the case of lower, excessive torque can occur. So you start off using the engine and finish off using your hand. That is recommended as shown. For placing four millimeter implant, you use up to set drill number three and in placing implant 4.5, you use up to set drill number four. Bone always rebounces, it springs back. Therefore, in the proximal area, if you use a set drill for a split, you leave the set drill and then move on to center point to minimize the rebouncing effect of the bone. Set drill 2. You always follow the order, center, distal, and proximal. From set drill 3, the amount of split increases and the amount of torque also increases. You always need to approach using your hand. When you place implant, the order is always from the center, distal to proximal. When you're placing two implants, start with distal area and then proximal area. The final placement position should be determined using hand wrench. The position of implant will be addressed in the next lecture. As shown, on the buccal lingual side, there should be 2 mm of bone left. This is how you should place the implant. If there is good primary stability, you can connect the healing abutment. In most cases, you can get favorable primary stability. You move on without doing graft and close the flap. In most cases, 
You do not need a vertical releasing incision. You can do this procedure with only crystal incision. You can minimize operation field. It does not require additional graft. At times, if you choose the right indication, you can get a very favorable result. If you use this protocol, you use asset kit. That's really about it. I've talked about protocol using asset kit. This is summary. In the case of asset kit, this is used when there's atrophied alveolar ridge horizontally. This is a kit for ridge split as mentioned. If you use a ridge split using asset kit, it can become more simple and easier, but you need to understand the protocol properly. It is essential to fully understand this protocol. For success of ridge split technique, the most important thing is to choose the right indication. If you perform these procedures on wrong indication, it will lead to failure even if you're a professional. You need to choose the right patient and indication to do ridge split to get a good result. I'm going to close off now. The asset kit can be used to do safe ridge split when there is a lack of horizontal bone amount. You can place implant safely in narrow ridges. I hope you use this kit to improve your skills and expand your know-how. Thank you for watching.